I, I just it liked I liked it just like the Mandalorian. Uh, those are the two shows that if they ever come back, which they're supposed to, I'll watch. So that's the reason why I say I claim the law of surprise because I figure you guys are Netflix Netflix people, so. Yep, all the way through 5A, due tomorrow, as long as you can take a picture of it, like uh, Airman Cordon just did. He took a picture of all of his homework and sent them to me. Uh, make sure that you send it this way, like that. All you got to do is put in at and then mayor, all one thing and it'll come up like that and then you can send it to me you can click drag whatever you want to do uh, airman Corden did a really good job of being able to take a picture and then just send it through discord to me so as long as everybody gets it in by 12 o'clock noon I just wanted to take a look and see how you guys are doing and if you want to mark it up whatever you need to do for the corrections again this is for your reference and it's for my reference that you're doing the work so let's get right on it and make sure I got everything ready to go 3 alpha so let's start with Aaron Corden you can go ahead and type it in the chat that means anybody else you know, I didn't even send that, so I'm sorry. We'll start with Airman Corden. You can give me answer number one on three alpha. You can type it in chat. What's the answer to it? And then we'll go like Owen, Peebles, Warnick, Yan, Drastics, and Matzak. Just write down the list. Transmit a baseband signal to the distant end. That is fantastic. All right. Number two would be Owen. What do you got an answer? You can type it in chat if you're having problems with your mic. Yes. Up conversion or up converter. Number three, Peebles. What'd you get? Outstanding. Great. All right. Number four. Mm, that is good. Number five. Okay. Fundamental radio parameters. And yeah, that would be the one we're asking about. But this is it. What parameters are used to determine quality in the radio equipment? There's a list. You give up, Yan? And it's in the study guide workbook. It's it's actually quite easy. Anybody want to help him out? Mm. As well as bandwidth. Good job. You get it, Yen? Okay, because the question is saying what parameters are used to determine the quality in a radio, and it's a list of things to determine it, not just the radio parameters. All right, number six would be Jurassic's. Okay, you kept cutting out. We want to try it again, please. Okay, type it in chat. 
measure of any system to the response to a frequency. Not necessarily. There's actually a study guy workbook answer to it. Do you anybody in here want to help out? Should be six. Mm, no. Anybody else? Yes, right there. Produced or reproduced within a certain tolerance. Remember I had explained to you that when you get a you know, stereo system, they come with a manual, and on that manual is some specifications and frequency response should be in there. And it's a pretty low percentage in how much there is of a deviation. They're able to do that. All right, let's go with number seven. I think that's uh, Matsack. Exactly, exactly. All right, so let's see here. We got number eight, which would be back to Cordon. Every time I see his name and pronounce it, I can think of uh, the Power Rangers, Zordon. Get it? No? Maybe. <laughs> well, I had kids growing up. Recover the baseband signal. Also, what? <laughs> yeah. Cordon, I think whenever I say your name, I think of the Power Rangers and Zordon. Z. Zulu. O-R-D-O-N. Why? It just, Cordon and Zordon, they kind of rhyme. I don't know why. It just pops in my mind when I say that. It's not meant to derogatory anybody. It just sounded pretty cool. Uh-oh. <laughs> if you grew up with the Power Rangers, you would understand. And if you watch the latest new movie, eh, it's not bad. Of course, they had Rita Repulsa on there. Let's see what he comes up with. I did, and that's the reason why I'm speechless. <laughs> Good one. All right, let's do, what is it, number nine? Owen? Fault, alarm, or wire, and switching commands. Not bad. Pretty good. Pretty good. All right. So we've completed three alpha. Let's go to three bravo. Give you a second. Let's see who we got next. That would be Peebles. Wow. Yes. Yeah. Good job. Good job. Number two. Okay. Uh, or you could have had binary, phase shift, king, quadrature, or quam. Any one of those. And then we have number three. I think Yan is okay. Alternating voltage amplitude. Yes, that is true. Number four. Jurassic's. What'd you get? How many bits per symbol? Good. One. Number five. Matt Sack. Exactly. Number six, back to you, Cordon. Three bits of data per symbol. That is correct. 
Owen, next one, number seven. Modulator, transmitter, receiver, filter, and demodulator. That is correct. Good job. Number eight. Uh, I like the iDirect modem. They were looking for something that we had in the block there. So, yes, iDirect modem. You're, you're fine. Number nine. Yes. Number ten. 30 terminals using four characters. Carrier, excuse me. I have no idea why I keep burping. And next up is 4 Alpha, number one. And I think Jurassic is typing in his message. Okay, they have to be able to see each other with no physical ob obstacles between transmitting and receiving antennas. That'll work. So, number two. That was Jurassic Smat Zack. Correct. Number three. And Cordon is writing it in. Ah, yes. That would be a long one, I understand. Especially if you have a phone and you're trying to type onto it. Yeah, it's a pain. Basic receiver, transmitter, line of sight units, and must be able to perform two primary functions, frequency, translation, and amplitude. Yes! Good job. We have number four. Yes, I can. Okay, <laughs> you're going to kick yourself in the butt. Remember, uh, yeah, go to page two on your C's and D's. And first of all, yeah, yeah, that's exactly where it is. It's asking about, I I'm sorry. Page two of your C's and D's, the electronic ones. Okay, C's and D's, page two. It talks about the IF repeater. Where's the majority of the amplification? Well, first of all, it should be an IF frequency. That's what they're asking for. But if you take a look at it, it breaks it down into 70 megahertz. Okay, let me grab my sheet real quick. All right. Make sure that I can show you. Okay, on your C's and D's, you see that? That, if I'm not mistaken, it's right here. <laughs> Okay, that's your 70 megahertz. That's what they're asking about. So you had to refer to this page because of the repeaters in order to get the answer. Remember, not only do we use the study guide workbook, but we use our C's and D's for the IF repeater too. So, good to go? 
All right. That, yes, that's, that's correct. Less distortion than the RF does. Okay, number six. And also, if you put in the need to drop or insert users along the way, that helps too. Number seven. System limit of eight repeaters before noise begins to degrade the signal. Fantastic. Fantastic. All right, let's all go to four Bravo. And who's next on the prices right here? Four Bravo. That was Yan, so that should be Jurassic's. So he's typing it in chat. You didn't get this one. Okay. It, it's pretty simple. When using a tropo comm, what happens to most of the transmitted radio signals? Anybody. Exactly. There's a very small percentage that gets refracted back down to Earth. Very small. Now, I'm not sure if you got it in your study guide workbook. I haven't checked on the new one. But there should be a diagram in there showing you, and on the slideshow too, where it shows you very little of that comes back down and everything keeps going, everything else keeps going out through outer space. All right, number two, that was Jurassic's Matzak. Exactly, fantastic. Number three, and that would be Cordon, Cordon. Airman Cordon. Let me see what happens here. Yeah, he's online. Of course, he could be writing. There we go. There we go. Sometimes it takes some time for Discord to show up when you're writing. There are sometimes I'll ask a question and I didn't see anything pop up down there, and all of a sudden the answer pops up from you. That one would be number three, if I'm not mistaken. Exactly. Now you guys do know that when you're using a tisser, and, and look above me here, that dish and that waveguide, the antennas inside of the RF assembly, so that waveguide is guiding the RF in and out. You're using both transmit and receive at the same time. So that antenna has reciprocity. So let's go to number four. You just cut out. Well, okay, that is really 
a good uh, analogy there, yes. Why is directivity? Well, the object is you're transmitting at such, uh, in our case for the tester, you're transmitting at such a low output wattage that you're not drawing uh, attention to yourselves if you're out in the, let's just say, the enemy combat position. So, you know, you're still working behind the lines, but it's pretty close to the line. So they can see what you're doing if your RF signature is big. But by using these, they make those RF signatures small, and that's the reason why you want to be pinpoint accuracy with these things. I shouldn't say pinpoint, but close in this case. So, yes, you're correct. Number five. That is correct. Number six. Exactly. Number seven. Yes, Cassegrainian or Cutler. Fantastic. Number eight. That's hopefully <laughs> you can cut it down a smaller size because that looks pretty big to me. Ah, good. Yep, on either side, extended wave guy. Good, good. All right, that concludes uh, for Bravo. Let's go to four Charlie. Uh, that would be correct because that comes right out of the tech order. Number two. That would be Cordon. Ah, yes. Love it. Pseudo NRZ. CDI and pseudo NRZ. Number three. Two? <laughs> I think it uses, <laughs> okay, has three. Okay, good. Yes, it has three. Remember, the RF assembly is small compared to the baseband assembly. So that's one way to figure it out. And number two, it's in the tech order. I think it's on, according to this, page 1-11, paragraph 1.4.3. I have references for all the TOs. Number four, this is where I've got a problem with uh, it, it, let me ask you guys first because I think that he forgot to update the study guide workbooks answers on this one. So it asks which is the only jerk 239 antenna size that can be mounted on a mast? Is that what it said? Okay, good. And the answer is exactly good. Number five. Okay, and why would that happen? Why would it cause for variations? Bingo. Yeah, good job on that one. Nice thinking there. Good. Number six. Any signal or noise at 8.5 would interfere with the operation of order wire. Uh, yes. Yes. Very good. Good job. All right. Number seven. Drastics, I think. Yeah, I didn't get this one. Hmm. Well, it is in the tech order. It's on page 5-1. Paragraph 
5.2.2.3. Now let me ask you here. The question reads, what is the purpose of a diplexer and what component is it? Is that what it says? Okay. Does anybody want to try this one? It does transmit and receive, but the diplexer is not to be confused with the circulator or duplexer. Anybody else? Okay, so apparently, again, this is on page 5-1, paragraph 5.2.2.3, and you should have something like, passes a transmitting baseband during transmit and blocks the 70 megahertz IF. Or it passes a 70 megahertz IF during receive and blocks the transmitting baseband. Well, nor yeah, that's true, but it's happening at the same time. And what component is it? It's filters. It's a combination of I think a band pass and a low pass filter. That's in you know if you were to open up one of those diplexers, you would see a bunch of coils. A capacitor or two, you know, coils being an inductor, and I think maybe a, and I'm, I'm trying to picture this in my head because it's been a while since I opened one up to take a look at it, but maybe a resistor which would give you an impedance value in there too. So again, that's on page 5-1, paragraph 5.2.2.3. Take a look at it. Number eight. Who has the next one? Jurassic. So that would be Matzak. What'd you get for number eight? Hmm. Anybody got something different? Uh, that would be correct. The voltage controlled oscillator is controlled by the phase lock loop. Let me try to bring this up real quick. Let me go to my Let me extinguish this and go to display capture. All right, signal flow. I want you to look at either the RF synthesizer or the transmit synthesizer as well as the two components it's tied to in the microwave LRU. Okay, so you have a transmit receive encoder that goes into the synthesizers. You'll see phase lock loop, and then over on the microwave LRU, you will see the VCO. Okay, the voltage controlled oscillator is the one that's generating the frequency that goes to the times two multiplier. You'll notice that it has an arrow going up to a divider. Okay, that divider then sends information over to another divider, and then the PLL takes over. What happens is, is when the VCO is producing that frequency, these dividers section up and give an idea if they are on frequency or off frequency. If they're on frequency, the PLL does nothing. It's, it says, I'm good, I don't have to send anything to the VCO to correct. If it's above it, or below what the PLL should be getting, it will send a voltage to the voltage controlled oscillator to make it either speed up to get back on frequency or slow it down to get back on frequency. 
most of the time it keeps it locked in place maybe one or two hertz off most of our electronics has really really got better with time especially within the software defined radio but this is what they're talking about in the phase lock loop with your VCO this is an outstanding example of it not trying to get into depth but it gives you an idea of how this works with PLL oops wrong one okay that was phase lock loop let's get to number nine who's next cordon receiver chain okay let me ask you does the question ask how is receiver pre-selector filter tuned and what's it tuned to I think they're looking more for what you can do not what's inside of it so with that in mind that is on TO page 5-4 paragraph 5.3.2.1 anybody want to want to chime in here okay fantastic to be plain Jane remember I brought up that front panel on the RF assembly and told you that when you're entering in your frequencies on your cut sheet not only will you put it in on the thumb wheels but you'll also go down to the bottom left hand side and there's a knob there to twist to put it on frequency and he's right about that you know rejecting all others and selecting the one that you want that's basically we're looking at the receive frequencies that we want in all right let's go with number 10 you asking me or are you telling me okay just making sure yeah that's straight out of the tech order number 11 Uh, yeah, that's exactly what it's asking for. Yes, it is 20 megahertz. Remember, the way that the tech order says on page 5-4, paragraph 5.2. Excuse me, 5.3.2.4, and what it says, it says it's centered on 70 megahertz remember I went over this this morning it's centered on 70 megahertz but it says plus or minus 10 megahertz which means that if you minus 10 megahertz that's 60 and if you add 10 megahertz that's 80 so that's a 20 megahertz band width or band pass being able to accommodate the 70 megahertz because please remember not only is that 70 megahertz got you know it besides the carrier but it's got information on it so you need a little bit wider so it can pass through so you got an uh, on a frequency FM they're pretty wide so 20 megahertz is probably just enough to get the information through Remember, now you're dealing with, what, 8.5 megahertz? So that 20 megahertz would probably work very well. And I say 8.5 megahertz because that's your order wire. So number 13, who do we have? Did I? Oh, okay. Well, let's do 12.
<laughs> that's right out of the tech order. Wow. Yes, exactly. Number 13. Die phase digital signal. What's another name for it? Any idea, Yan? Okay. Uh, let me ask you, what are the two signals, baseband signals, that you can have in the tisser? You remember? You can say no. <laughs> it's not going to hurt me. Nope. <laughs> I like that one. Anybody have an idea what we call it? There's two signals, baseband signals, that we have that could go into the baseband assembly to be modulated. What are they? Okay. So. Yan, CDI is what I was looking for. That's that die phase digital signal that you put in there. That's what I was asking for. So, so anything that says die phase, you can probably associate with CDI. Number 14. Ding, ding. Modulated by test tone. Hmm. No, I think what they're asking for, and I'm going to give you a broad range here, is it AM, FM, PV, binary, uh, let me think about it, binary phase shift king, amplitude phase shift king, is it uh, frequency shift king, what? That's the technique that they're asking for. You can wild guess it. <laughs> okay, AM, FM, BPSK, AF, ASK, FSK. Okay, this should be interesting. Okay, anybody? What's the modulation technique? I've told you a dozen times on this thing. I don't think he quite... Loop back testing? No. Modulation. Modulation. Coming out of the order wire, okay, it comes into a subcarrier what technique is used to get it to that particular modulation technique what is it when it yes it's fm it's fm so that that's what you're getting you're at 8.5 megahertz fm signal when you get to the synthesizer up there and when it gets to the microwave lru that's where it becomes instead of 8.5 as well as the bass band now you're going to boost it up to where it is first the up conversion from modulating to IF would be 7.2 to 6. Point, uh, excuse me 7.2 to 7.625 gigahertz FM because that's the discriminator and then it's going to up convert it to the operating frequency of 14.4 to 15.25 gigahertz FM and remember on the FET they talked about because of FM you're going to generate a lot of harmonics I mean it's right there in the TO it says it'll generate a lot of harmonics hence the harmonic filter at the end so it's FM gentlemen and that is on page 5-7 paragraph 5 dot four 
dot two. And by the way, I will be putting this up online so you guys can go back and look through the tech order with what we have here on these questions. It might behoove you to do that. So let's go to 5 alpha. Number one. Oh yeah. Both transmit and, and receive. Number two. So that was Matzak, right? Okay, Cordon, number two. What would cause a channel error LED to illuminate? I think I even asked that question a while back. When the transmitter or receiver thumb wheel switches are set to the frequency outside of the permitted operating range. Remember I told you about the thumb wheels and people breaking them because they kept thinking it was a different mode on those thumb wheels but I told you about because of the channel air light it will illuminate when you go outside the 14.4 you can go below it and the 15.25 you can go above it that's when that channel air light illuminates so you would literally have to go to table 4-1 to look at that and review that number three exactly exactly number four Okay, and number five. Yep, they even showed you this morning on that. So hopefully you guys are getting an idea about how this TO is working. Uh, I'm going to suggest that, you know, for reviews that you go back through your homework as well as the appraisals, which will be due on Monday. So please, 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 you know, you don't have to read it all. You just have to find stuff on this uh, homework in the TO, especially for Charlie and 5 Alpha. Look at where those things are so you can get an idea because the last thing you want to do is press Control F and it shows up with a couple hundred of these things that you need to, to look at. You could go to chapter 5 and do a control F and you've narrowed it down because you know that's where the question is going to be asking. So when you get to the test, and I cannot emphasize this enough, you will be given a CD that has the Tisser TO, it will have the NSM tech manual, it will have the electronic C's and D's, or, because I hate the electronic C's and D's, they're too small for me. I like the big, you know, you've seen my paper that I've shown you online here. They have the, I think it's 11 by 17 paper copies of the C's and D's. Use them. Find out what is on them and try to track how the bold lines are on both transmit and receive and look at it in the TO. That's one way to get familiar with it. I'm not saying you got to go in depth or anything like that, but just follow it through. With the rest of the study guide workbook, you know, it it the homework is a pretty good tool, but you know, make sure that you're reading the highlighted areas that we went through that you've got notes on because we're going to cover everything on that test. There's 40 questions. Again, you got to get all 28 correct in order to go to the next block. 
again over the weekend I'm still on discord and be working my butt off trying to get this new course online so if you got a question please ask it I'm probably going to be playing World of Tanks later on tonight just to shoot some stuff digitally you know pixel tanks sh shooting stuff and that to uh, relieve some stress so to speak you know and to have fun because that's what I do I like to have fun so over the weekend you guys are allowed to go off base now okay maybe it's just the prior service are allowed to do it right now and it could be well uh, we've seen an increase in COVID uh, reporting in fact yesterday was a huge day for down here on the coast there is a lot of people that caught it and were uh, deemed positive for COVID so I don't know what the scoop is as far as you guys are concerned but I think yeah you, know, you guys should be able to go to the main BX and commissary right okay so after work or whatever you can go there and you know go in the commissary get some food and then go to the BX and buy your games and so forth and so on so at least you have now a little bit more leeway to get out and about please get out and about but just remember you still have this block to pass you need help I'm the one please message me also remember 12 o'clock tomorrow the law of surprise has been enacted if you've ever watched the witcher you would know what I'm saying please get your homework in just take a picture if you got a file or whatever just send it as long as I can make out what it is to determine if you've got all your homework one or two questions okay no big deal but if you're missing a whole objective I got a question that all right I'm giving you from this time to that time just just so you can get most of your answers in and I'm crossing my fingers that no one is going to do what happened in the last class which didn't turn in stuff so please don't do that I'm signing off you guys have a great weekend and be safe out there all right all right take care and goodbye